Bell parishioners and maybe St. Bonnie parishioners. Or St. Mary St. Chester Mary. Yeah. So uh, we're here to talk a little bit about uh, we being Father Peter 1 and Father Peter 2. I thought I, I, thought I would be Father Peter 1 and you could be Father Peter 2. How about if we, how, how about if we just go Father Richards and Father Hughes? All right. Even though I should be number one. But, um, so we're going to talk a little bit to you about Lent. Uh, help you get ready for that, hopefully. And uh, so Father Peter, what, or sorry, Father Hughes, <clears throat> what, uh, what, what's Lent all about? What does it mean? Yeah, so Lent is like this, uh, it's a liturgical season, of course, and there's a lot of different ways we can kind of think about it, but I think it's helpful just that the readings at the beginning of Lent are Jesus going into the desert. So we can look at it as this time for us to go into the desert as well. And so often the desert is described as like this spiritual place where we do battle. So it's this opportunity for us to go deeper in our uh, spiritual life and to allow the Lord to continue to work and to face any sort of inner demons that we might have, whether there are things that are coming from our own woundedness or our patterns of sin or just some of those obstacles that might keep us from living in the, the fullness of what God is calling us to. So it kind of has a purpose, the purpose being to draw us closer to our Lord. Yeah, and I think that, that purpose... Yeah, and I think that purpose is an important part that we want to consider, especially as we're coming up on Lent and trying to make our own Lenten plans. Uh, one of the things I've been focusing on a lot lately has been sort of an intentionality in our spiritual life, in our life of prayer. So not just sort of falling into Lent and, and falling back to, well, this is what I always give up every time I do Lent, but really to have this intentionality of saying, I want this time to be a time that's bringing me closer to the Lord. Um, so that, to have that sense of purpose, to have that sense of intentionality as we come up here on Ash Wednesday, just next week. Yeah. Yeah, so there's even things we do as a, as a church all together. I mean, they're not necessarily meant to be things that we drop once Lent is over. But what what are some of those practices we might do um, as a, as a church together, as a body, as the body of Christ? Yeah, I think there's sort of two different levels that we want to be operating on during Lent. So the first is just all of us as as Catholics. We're called to what the church prescribes, which is the, the prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. I think so often when we think of Lent, we just focus on that fasting piece, but uh, all three of those are really important. So as a, as a church, as all of us as being Catholics, we're called to uh, that life of prayer, especially, again, having that intentionality of making sure we're setting aside some extra time for prayer here during Lent. Uh, and to help facilitate that, one of the other things is... Uh, fasting and so specifically that what the church asks us to do is in fasting is it's fasting and abstinence so we know that every Friday we're called to do some form of fasting and in the past it's always just been giving up meat which is actually abstinence um, but especially during Lent we want to have that focus on those Fridays so it's uh, abstinence is not eating meat and that is uh, from the age of, I believe, 14 until 59, that we want to be abstaining from meat on Fridays during Lent. And then the fasting is, there's a little formula, but it's one full meal a day and then two smaller meals that don't together equal one full meal. Uh, and that is anyone eight, 18 up to 59 once again. And that's not to say that if you're 60 or 61 years old that you just go out and gorge yourself either. It's just that those specific ways of, of fasting and abstinence aren't imposed or it's not a requirement for you. Uh, but obviously it's still a good spiritual exercise to maybe find some other way to continue to unite our own sufferings and our own sacrifices to the suffering and the sacrifice of Christ. And then almsgiving, of course, being those those charitable acts. So the most common thing we would think of would be uh, giving money, yeah, out to poor people, like uh, our, our poor parishes, or uh, but more more importantly, trying to support those charities that are doing really good uh, good things here in in our local community or, or on a national or international scale. Uh, but to continue to try to live those things, that prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, just as a Catholic body. And it's something with suffering especially, that it, it can be something that really 
joins us as a community and with so many different divisions um, in so many different areas of our life right now. I think having that focused time of sacrifice and penance as a church will be a way not only to renew the church, but also to be able to be that light and a source of healing and, and unity in our local communities as well. So as individuals, then, uh, what would you recommend? What do you think would, um, would be a good way to do that prayer fasting and that almsgiving? The church ways we got, you know, we all got to do that. So what about individuals? Um, would you recommend that uh, we just choose something or do we, how do we, how do we decide what to do? Yeah, I think it's important to recognize that our Lenten period of time isn't just a self-help program, but it's something that really can help draw us again deeper into our relationship with God. So I think the first place to start is maybe taking uh, some time here before Ash Wednesday to really pray about what is it that I should be doing for my own personal Lenten practice. That's where I, uh, I'd recommend taking 30 minutes of, of quiet prayer and to spend some time with the Lord, asking the Holy Spirit to come into your heart and to reveal what the, what God's desire is for us to give up. Uh, because, again, we can't. It, it's not helpful for us just to say, well, I'm going to give up this or I'm going to give up that or I'm going to do this. But we want to make sure that it's what the Lord is inviting us to because that's going to be what draws us ultimately closer to God because he knows those obstacles most clearly that are keeping us from him. So spending that 30 minutes of, of prayer just asking you know, Holy Spirit reveal to my heart and to my mind what it is that you're inviting me to give up and to have that be the foundation from which we make those decisions um, and then finding something for ourselves. And one of the questions to consider is what is it that's keeping me from the Lord? Maybe it's uh, consuming too much news or media or social media, spending too much time on Facebook or Instagram or, or reading the, the newest and latest uh, kind of juicy article that's coming out. Uh, maybe it's that I'm not spending time every day in prayer and for my, my Lent I'm going to spend 15 minutes a day in prayer. Or maybe it's uh, you're recognizing that my sleep isn't, isn't good so I need to really pay attention to my sleep hygiene. There's just so many different things that can really draw us closer to the Lord. So that's the first thing is to spend some time in prayer to ask, what is it, Lord, that's keeping me from you? And then coming up with a plan. Uh, I think there's one thing that's worth noting is that, uh, at least in seminary, they always talked about how our penance shouldn't be a penance for everyone else. So if I'm going to be really crabby in the morning, if I don't have my cup of coffee, I should at least talk to like you and Father Kyle, or for you, those of you who are married, to talk to your spouse and say, I'm, I'm thinking about giving this up. What is, is that okay? Just so that we can be in this together as well and that are we don't become a burden. I am not thinking about giving okay. up coffee. So I was going to say no to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be crabby in the holy hour. But uh, yeah, so I think that would be, that, that's the way to start. And then to look at those three things and prayer, fasting, and almsgiving and to make a plan of life for Lent. Um, yeah, I think another thing that we want to be mindful of too is that uh, sometimes because Lent is just sort of this section of time during the year, there can be these times where we forget. It's a Friday during Lent and we're about halfway through a cheeseburger or maybe you're halfway through your cheeseburger because I'm really good at remembering these types of things. <laughs> no, but... Um, yeah, mm. But uh, to, to remember that this is what the church asks, and so if we find that we've forgotten or that we've slipped up in at least what the church is asking for us, that we do bring that to confession to, uh, to continue to keep our minds and our hearts and souls as open as they can be to continuing to receive that grace. Speaking of confession, that would probably be a good thing to do during Lent as part of the prayer part. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so I know we've been talking a little bit about uh, different Lenten opportunities for confession, trying to help each other out at the parishes. Uh, but yeah, I'd encourage everyone to try to go to confession during this time. The church does ask that we go uh, once a year to confess any mortal sins, but I think just, just, there's so many wonderful blessings that we get, and it helps keep us open to receiving all the graces that God has for us by regularly going. So a good practice, I think, is going once a month, <laughs> whether you need it or not. And I think the more that you go once a month, the more you realize that, well, okay, I actually do need this in my life. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, have you decided what you're going to give up yet? 
I have not decided what I'm going to give up yet, but one of the things that for me that's been really lacking in the last couple of months, especially with uh, COVID and the, the regulations around that is uh, kind of my diet and exercise and especially my exercise. Uh, I mean, as you know, I've, that's been <laughs> kind of a, an important part of my life for a long time, but helps me with dealing with stress and emotional regulation and all these other things. And uh, it's just something that with the busyness of, of managing the two parishes that I have, uh, and then just all the other things kind of on top of that, it's been hard uh, to be motivated to that. Uh, so that's one of the things I'm, I'm working towards is coming up with some sort of a schedule for lunch just to, to get back into a, a regular routine of, of exercise and then trying to eat cleanly as well just so that I deal with kind of my own interior health in, in a way that then can help me in navigating the, the various things that come up in, in parish life. And certainly together we've got our, our life of prayer together with Holy Hour and, and things like that as well. So I think that's one of those pieces that's sort of missing and it, it's keeping me from being able to be fully present to the Lord, especially fully present to the Lord in the lives of, of parishioners. Mm -hmm. How about you? Have you uh, thought of it? Uh, a little bit. You know, the first thing that came to mind, and I, I really need to bring this to prayer, is scotch. You know, I don't know if I want to give that up every day. <laughs> See, speaking of every day, if we give something up, do we have to do it on Sunday too? So that's an interesting question, and it's probably the most controversial part about our video today, uh, depending <laughs> on what else comes next. But um, so, <laughs> strictly speaking, Sunday is a solemnity, and as we live as Catholics, like we want to really be sure to celebrate solemnities. But then it kind of depends on what it is that we're giving up. So yes, we can do whatever it is that we're giving up on a Sunday, but a Sunday is also a day where we're really worshiping the Lord and it's a day that's set aside, it's that Sabbath, we're called into Sabbath rest and to really be recreated in our hearts, minds, souls, and lives. And so if I'm giving up, you know, like listening to secular music that's really bad, like I probably don't want to celebrate Sunday by listening to that. Or if I'm giving up a sin in my life, like I'm gonna really try to give up gossiping in my life. Sunday's probably not a day that you want to then spend the day like, well, it's it's Sunday, I can just do what I gave up. Away. <laughs> I'm just gonna gossip, I'm gonna catch up on everything that I've missed, and I'm gonna tell everyone about everything. Like we wanna make sure that we're honoring it. But if we give up desserts or or alcohol or, or sweets or something like that, it would it would be a fitting way to celebrate that uh, that Sunday by allowing ourselves to indulge a little bit. Uh, that being said, you don't have to do what you gave up on Sunday. And there's certainly those who are a little bit more hardcore that are going to say, you know what, no, I'm going to go all the days of Lent, including those Sundays, and I just, I really want to focus on that. So like for me, for exercise, I, I'm still going to try to exercise on Sunday because that's going to be something that helps me to elevate my, my body to the Lord and, and to continue to enter into that sacrifice. Um, so if you see me sitting around taking a nap Sunday after Masses, you can remind me, hey, aren't you supposed to be practicing your Lenten penances? Yeah, I know that happens a lot too, so I'll probably be reminding you. But, um, <laughs> so I just want to, there's a, there's a great website, this is not a commercial, I have no stake in it, but that's called Crossroads Initiative, and uh, crossroadsinitiative.com. Real practical tips in there. We're also, the parish is going to be sending you if you, uh, updated your email address and you want it. We'll be sending you the best Lent ever videos every day. So um, uh, go ahead and look at that and those things will help you have a great Lent. And so we're just going to close in a prayer and ask God to help us have a, a fruitful Lent. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you Lord for this season of Lent we have coming up. I ask that you bless us, help us to Grow closer to you in all uh, that we do and to grow in our love uh, for you and, f and in our lives. We ask this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.